First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace, peace. Back once again with Dr. Ali Mel Bay's show. What we're going to get into tonight is a very powerful discussion as well as also imperative based on the current um, events in which that has been occurring, especially with the Occupy Wall Street and the scores of police brutality, as well as also these cases have prompt federal investigation now. Um, in which that, um, according to um, an article by Eric Dolan, he writes that fatal police shooting and beating and allegations of torture to coerce confessions have led the United States Department of Justice to launch investigations into local law enforcement across the country. Um, this was um, August the 10th, 2011. It goes on to say there were 52 criminal civil right cases brought against law enforcement officers by the Justice Department last year, the highest amount of cases in, um, in since the agency been keeping record from 2000. Um, so this is they just started keeping records since 2000 on this. And so um, we have another article by Mel Evans in which that goes in, um, Kevin Johnson, um, USA Today, in which that goes into that police brutality cases are on the rise since 9-11. And it says Washington federal prosecutor are targeting a rising number of law enforcement officers for alleged brutality. Justice Department statistics shows the heightened prosecutions come from a na- from the nation's largest police union fears that agencies are dropping standards to fill thousands of vacancies and is skimping on training. So these individuals, these officers are not even being trained properly. And I don't even want to say officers because they're not officers of the court, of any court. They um, are policy enforcers for the municipality. And it says cases in which that police 
prison guards and other law enforcement authorities have used excessive force or other tactics to violate victims' civil rights. Well, how about human rights? Not just civil rights, human rights, because they're not being seen as human beings. And this is the reason, one of the reasons why they're being victimized. And we're talking about psychopathic tendencies. All right, we're going to get into that discussion a little bit um, later here. But civil rights, um, victims of civil rights have increased 25% from the fiscal year 2001 to 2007. Over the previous seven years, the department say that during the same period, the department Say it's say that it won fifty three more convictions. Um, some cases results in multiple convictions. Federal record shows that the vast majority of police brutality cases referred by investigators are not prosecuted. Well, the reason why is because we need to pull out more of the cell phones and camcorders in order to record these things. And the reason why it appears to have increased is because of the technology in which that we now have, which is, i.e., the cell phones and the capability of of, um, having a camera recorder, as well as also the camera itself on the phone. And, of course, it says that um, the vast majority of these police brutality cases are not even prosecuted because there's a code of silence. You know, the FOP, the Fraternal Order Police. You know, that's a fraternity within itself. So, we seen that one of the things in which that triggered capturing police brutality on film was number one, I would say the Rodney King case of Los Angeles, March the third, nineteen ninety one. You know, you know when the LAPD officers um, tased him, kicked him, stomped him, beat him. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, he had multiple lacerations and bruises, a fractured facial bone, and a broken leg. No, it was he was lucky to survive. You know, but you had the LAPD officers Coon, Powell, um, Brasino, and uh, Wynn. It was all charged in the beating. However, they was acquitted. They acquitted at least three um, of the officers, in which that basically spawned, you know, the LA riots of '92. You know, after the L.A. riots, the Department of Justice obtained an um, indictment for civil rights violations against the four LAPD officers. And Powers and Coon was found guilty and sentenced to 30 months in prison, while um, Brasino and Wynn were acquitted. And this is after we seen what took place on camera. And most of us were appalled. So that's the reason why for the increase of the said uh, capturing police brutality on film or on video because of the technology. You know, the video cameras are smaller, cheaper, and more readily available now. More incidences of the police brutality and misconduct um, are being taped. You know, let's talk about um, another case in which that occurred. Um, Oscar Grant the Third. Now he was shot by um, Hoy, um, I think he was shot to death in Oakland, California. Mercerly. Um, fled from California to Nevada after allegedly receiving death threats and was arrested on fugitive um, warrants there. 
you know, the the shooter was captured on a cell phone video by um several witnesses. You know, the video I think the video showed um Grant being pinned down by one of Bart's um officers and then being shot in the back by um Masurley. Masurley. You know? And um, the incident in the um, video recording of it sparked outrage and violence in Oakland. All right, we had um, well, Baron um, Pikes, who was 21, when he was um, handcuffed by um, police in um, Winfield, Louisiana, and tased nine times. You know, um, Pike um, was dead 39 minutes later. Um, Officer Scott um, Nugent saw Pikes walking and attempted to arrest him on an outstanding warrant. Pikes ran but was soon cornered by another officer. The officer, the officer shot Pikes with a taser nine times. The officer said that on the way to the police station, Pikes became ill and they called for ambulance. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. You know, this incident um, happened near Jenna. It sparked more racial tension as Nukin is, um, of course, white and Pikes was a black man. And remember, we talk about fictions here as far as white and black. But these are words in which that are being used in these articles. And then of course you had um Emily Dallafield um from out of um Clay County, Florida. She was fifty six year old mental um Mental illness, um, wheelchair um, bound woman who died after police shot her 10 times with a taser gun. One officer um, tased um, Emily nine times for a total of 160 seconds, and another officer tased the woman once for at least five seconds. And then it says her death was ruled a homicide. What happened to the officers? Oftentimes, nothing. They get transferred. Another case is Robert Davis was a um, retired elementary school teacher from New Orleans who was arrested and brutally beaten by police on suspicion of public intoxication. That was on the night of um, October the 9th, 2005. That was um, less than a little over a month after the Hurricane Katrina disaster. He was walking. Matter of fact, he was um, in the French Quarter, you know, trying to buy um, some cigarettes. And there he was attacked by four officers, by, by four policemen, who, who claimed that he was belligerent and resisted arrest by not allowing um, them to handcuff him. The beating was videotaped by an um, Associated Press producer who was also assaulted that night. It says the officers was either fired or suspended for their involvement, but many of the charges against them were cleared. And of course, we have the Sean Bell incident. Sean Bell was killed by M- NYPD detectives who fired 50 times at the call Bell and his own friends were riding in on November the 25th, 2006. 
On the night of the shooting, a group of um, undercover officers were investigating a Queens, New York um, strip, strip club that was allegedly allowing prostitution. Bell was having his bachelor party at the club that same night. Following a confrontation that happened inside the club, one of the officers overheard Bell friends um, talk about getting his gun. In order to stop a shooter from happening, this is what it said, allegedly, the officer confronted Bell and his friends while they were in the car and ordered them to stop. Bell started to drive off. An officer thought um, he saw a gun in the car. So he said. And so he and the other police opened fire on the car. After the non-jury trial comes to an end, the judge found all three detectives not guilty of manslaughter and assault. I remember being in New York when that verdict came in. On that day, matter of fact, Brother Sarnetta was asking me the question about how I felt about it, and I was saying that the family needed to seek remedy. What they need to do to those officers, being that the um, court couldn't do anything at that particular time, was to actually do like the IRS does, and that's to put a lien on them so that they cannot use their credit. And then um, file new charges in a higher court. Another tragic is Timothy Thomas, who was tragically shot down and killed by a Cincinnati police officer who followed the young man um, down a dark alley and opened fire on him because he thought Thomas had a gun. The 19-year-old man had 14 open warrants at the time of the shooting, and according to Officer Roach, who should have been stomped like a roach, he was given verbal commands to stop running, but he did not comply. When Thomas began lowering his arms without instruction, Officer Roach opened fire and shot Thomas in the heart with a single bullet. There was not, and there was never a gun found on Thomas. Abner Luima, Haitian immigrant who was brutalized, attacked, tortured by a white NYPD officer on August the 9th, 1997. Officer Jason Volpe took Luima into the restroom on the 70th, um, 70th um, precinct um, station house in Brooklyn and sodomized. The winner with a broken broomstick and shoved it up his behind, his anus, literally, and pulled it out and then put it and broke off his teeth in, in, the, um, in his mouth in court. Volpe said that he thought Luima punched him in the head. Thought Luima punched him in the head during a scuffle outside at the nightclub. But also a minute that he wanted to humiliate Luima regardless. So Volpe left the police force and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. And Charles Swartz, who was also sentenced to 15 years in prison for assisting um, Volpe in the assault. This incident brought greater awareness to the ongoing pattern of white New York police officers abusing black men and overstepping their authority. We're going to get into the mentality of these individuals. You have Robert Mitchell, a 16-year-old from Detroit who was tragically killed by um, police who was said to, um, you know, resist arrest after a traffic stop. Police used a taser, um, a taser gun on Mitchell who was also running from um, his cousin's car into an abandoned house. The taser gun that killed Mitchell sent over 50,000 Volts of electricity into him. The police defending their use of the non lethal weapon because they say that he was resisting arrest. And of course, you have, and you have Amado Diallo, who was an immigrant from Guinea 
was shot and killed in New York on February the ninth, on February nineteen ninety nine, and he was sitting on his stoop in in, in New York in the Bronx, and four police officers fired forty one times into the um, Bronx apartment building because they thought Diallo had a gun. The uncover the undercover um, officer said Diallo looked suspicious and thought he might have been assisting in a robbery and other criminal activity. Diallo then followed the officer's command, and when he reached into his pocket, the officer began shooting only to find out that he was unarmed and was holding his wallet in his hand. A year later, the four officers who shot Diallo was acquitted of second-degree murder and other charges. You have Catherine Johnston, who was tragically killed by two Atlanta police officers during a um, a botch uh, drug raid in 2006. The 92-year-old woman was alone inside of her home when the officers burst in without warning, without a warrant. She fired at them with a handgun, injuring three of the men, and they um, fired back at Johnston, striking her five to six times. The officer was told by an undercover informant that he bought drugs from a dealer there named Sam. The man who claimed to be the informant said he never bought drugs at Johnston's house. The two police officers involved in the shooting pleaded guilty to manslaughter and several other charges, and a third officer was also indicted in the murder case. Let's see what's going on here. Let's analyze this, because um, I went to school for sociology, and so, um, basically, my field is um, social uh, behavior, or I guess you can say a social behaviorist. Um, that's my field of study. And when you look at the social effects of what is taking place, we're talking about a mentality. And when you look at the brain, you have to um, deal with also psychology and the portion of the brain in which that is affecting all of this is the reptilian portion of the brain. The effects of the reptilian brain on society is obvious. The more the average person uses the reptilian brain and their basic instincts, the more corruption, crime, domestic problems, and everything else that causes social disorder rise. There's a reason why political and Corporations have been so blatantly corrupt. The power and the greed aspects of the reptilian brain has been enhanced in the political and the corporate leadership. And this has created an environment which where only the most operated people can rise to the top. Anyone who is decent in thinking about the consequences of their actions cannot become a leader. You see what's going on? So the reptilian brain is only concerned for itself. And anyone who operates from it too much gets into a state where they don't know the difference between right and wrong. And they do not consider the need of other people. And this is the definition of a psychopath. And we'll get into some of that in a minute and how to look for the traits of that. But the reptilian brain is also the cause of a lot of of social disorders. And it may explain why there are so many divorces in society as well as also police brutality, racial profiling. Because the reptilian portion of the brain acts off of anything in which that is different. It has a problem with. As a matter of fact, let's go to our president, Obama, and let's see what he has to say about it. 
I, I'm sure you're old enough to remember this movie. But in uh, 1967, guess who's coming to dinner? I, I, I was only six. I figured. <laughs> really? But I do. I, the best of what remember I, 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 I do remember the movie. Now, do you and, remember uh, this? Sidney Poitier was, was he smooth. Please, he's the greatest ever. Yeah. But he says to his father, you think of yourself as a, as a Negro man, and I think of myself as a man, and that's the difference. Is that still relevant today? I, I ask you. What, what are we? Who are we? Well, we are Americans. We share common hopes. We share common dreams. We share common aspirations. We're going through common struggles. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that everybody here, and I look at this audience and it's representative of the country, everybody here is connected in some fashion. Uh, and our success and our children's success uh, is tied up uh, together. And so, I think most Americans feel that way, mm -hmm. but what is still true is, is that you know, uh, there's still kind of a reptilian side of our brain, right? A, 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 that, that part of our brain that if somebody looks different or sounds different, that there's a part of us that is cautious. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is fight against that, and that's part of what Shirley Sherrod was trying to say in the speech, if you actually read the whole speech, she was acknowledging I have my own biases based on my experiences, but if I am able to look inward and reflect, then I can get beyond my biases. And that's an exercise that all of us have to undergo day in, day out, and it's a, it's a constant struggle, and uh, uh, you know, it's something that there, there's nobody in America who doesn't have to at some point think about their own racial attitudes. Can I ask but if you we about do, that? then I think okay. there's no reason we can't overcome. What is still true is, is that yeah, you know, uh, there's still kind of a reptilian side of our brain, right? A, 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 that that part of our brain that if somebody looks different or sounds different, that there's a part of us that is cautious. Yeah, you know, uh, there's still kind of a reptilian side of our brain. All right. So he explained it very well, and so you have to understand what is taking place here. These individuals who are put within these positions, they are given psychological tests. If you are a police officer, you have a psychological evaluation. Prior to even joining the police force, you have to take a test. A correction officer. Most of the top fields, you have to take a psychological test. So I'm thinking based on the reoccurrence of this, that the psychological tests in which that is given look for the traits of individuals who are psychopaths. They look for these traits. You think I'm stretching it? Well, let's continue on and we'll see. The reptilian brain is also the cause of a lot of social disorders, and it may explain why there are so many problems in society. If people operate from this base instinct, then they will become more animalistic and will start adopting the same kind of features of animals. That goes with um, obsession, suppression, oppression of people, of things, of places. This explains why relationships about are more about sex and not about love anymore. And the reason why 70% of the divorce rates in America, because the couples separate, because they tend not to um, say what each other um, like um, they used to. So people who operate from this base um, instinct often think for them, um, only think for themselves and their own survival. So the family is a victim in a society 
where most people operate primarily from their reptilian brains. Another feature of the reptilian brain is that there is a lot of tension associated with it because it is about short-term survival and logic, love, compassion, etc. already associated with it. And there is why, and this is why there is so much tension in so many relationships today. And this is why so many relationships fall apart. The elite has a policy of destroying the family unit and reducing the population. So to them, this is a good thing. And so they have us primarily working off of the reptilian portion of the brain. Anytime that you attempt to instill fear within individuals, you are making them operate at the reptilian portion of the brain. So 911, the reason why I put the increase after 911 is because you instill fear within the people. So you will now primarily have them operate from the reptilian portion of the brain. So it's destabilizing the relationships, the natural relationships between man and woman, but then society is putting in its place how it is fine for gay marriage, homosexual affairs, and marriages. Why? Because that is more conducive to the civilization which they want, which is based on the um, the genocide program or the population control agenda. Of the elite, of the said elite. The government also wants to um, be the family of the children, and this is why they want to destroy the family. People from third world countries still have good families values compared to people in Western countries, and one of the main reasons is because they haven't been inundated with the nonsense and also expose the chemicals. We spoke about this, you know, last week in which that there's a chemical dumbing down of the American people, of the said United States citizens, the TV, sports, celebrities, etc. That's, that's, you know, that's, we, we have. And they haven't been zombified. So, I mean, so um, the third world people haven't been zombified. They haven't um, made it, been made into zombies. Our people here have. The third world people um, or third world countries don't operate from their base instincts as much, and this is why they have better families and social structures than we do. Aside from family, the reptilian brain causes a lot of social tension as well, and this um, is a, um, basically a cause for a lot of the crimes where the perpetrators have um, no consideration for their victims, as you've seen from what we just finished laying out as far as the police brutality. And we're telling you this is where this originates from. And if you get Dr. Richard King's book, um, African Origin of Biological Psychiatry, he states in there about the calcification of the pineal gland and how 5 to 15% Africans have calcified pineal glands, 20 to 35% Asians have calcified pineal glands, and 60 to 80% Europeans have calcified pineal glands. This is a statistic in which that relegates an individual to the usage of the reptilian brain permanently. And this is the reason why um, there's no cure for psychopaths. And we'll get into that in a second. But everything I'm talking about just explains why the political leaders can kill millions of people in war and not have any kind of guilt at all. Because guilt, remorse, Compassion, mercy, etc., aren't associated with the reptilian brain. Most people in their normal states have a problem with killing someone. And most people would not kill someone or do something that will harm or kill someone, even 
with brainwashing. But if someone operates from their base instincts, that fail safe, which stop people from killing each other, is turned off and they become psychopaths. And this is what we're seeing with the increase. Actually, it's been around. I mean, I mean, you're looking at these officers are actually from the ticket, as um, Karis once said, is taken from the word overseers. So on the plantations, you know, you had the um, house niggas and the field niggas, as they would say, in which that the um, overseers and the snitches, who was the um, said bucks, you know, who was given um, some type of liberties in order to go around and sex all the women, but he also had to be the spy, too, for the overseer. And so um, this snitching, you know, to the overseer officer, you know, and their um, brutality upon the slaves. You know, you watch the movie Roots. You seen Kuta Kente. He ran away. And during that time period, um, as a matter of fact, they say that I was a sign of moral insanity. They said Kuta Kente... Um, and from the movie, um, would have been classified as a psychopath because he wanted to run away from slavery to some type of freedom, but he was not being controlled by another's dictates. This is what they say about us, is that we actually are insane because how well we are doing now. I've heard um, Europeans, Albion, say, you know, how, you know, um, and this is, this. I'm not doing this generalized, this not to generalize, but this is what I've actually heard, you know, how they have taken us from out of the jungles of Africa and have civilized us and brought us civilization, you know, and, you know, took us from Africa from, you know, and brought us here to civilization and how we should be thankful for the advances that we have made and look at how we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. All of these types of nonsense, all these types of things. Well, let me explain. Another symptom of people operating from their base instinct too much is something which has already been discussed is the lack of interest in the things like science, art, culture, etc., and most people in the West are interested in sports and celebrities, which are things that do appeal to the base instinct because it's warlike, because it's fashion, you know. This is the modern-day bread and, and um, circus, you know, that caused ancient Rome to degenerate and eventually collapse. Remember, the homosexual thing um, before each fall of the civilization, homosexual was at all time high. That was in Egypt. That was in uh, when the Persians took over, the Greeks took over. Um, in Egypt, that happened there. It happened in Greece. It happened in Rome. It is now happening in the United States. This lack of interest has been calling the dumbing down of society. But a lack of IQ and education are the worst things because there's a lot of people um, who haven't been educated, who are still politically and socially active. As mentioned at the top, most of the opponents of, um, matter of fact, of the um, apartheid regime in South Africa didn't even have an education at all, whereas the Nazi Germanys had a good educational um, system. You know, people who are called cold-blooded killers or bloodsuckers of the poor, you know, or, you know, or called, you know, that's because their reptilian brains are enhanced and in control of that person. Other people are described as being cold to one another are also people who operate from their reptilian brains. The features of the reptilian brain um, that the elite are, interest, are interested in is the hierarchy aspect because this is what keeps them in, them in power. The more the reptilian brain is enhanced, the more hierarchical people become and the more submissive and obedient they are. Enhancing the reptilian brain is a good way to combat awareness and keep people locked 
in the control grid. And this is what is going on. As mentioned before, the different aspects of the reptilian brain are related to each other and enhance, or enhance and some enhance the others as well. Combine that with the chemical um, lobotomizes, the lobotomies, and the drugs that dull people minds and keep them happy and docile um, is a good way to turn people into biological robots or zombies. The biggest effect of enhancing uh, the reptilian brain is that it makes people more fleshly, more materialistic, and it closes off the true self in order to keep people in the matrix system or the artificial reality that people are in. It is necessary to close off the spirit as much as possible and making people as fleshly and materialistic as possible and making them operate from this base instinct is a good way to do that. This is why the elite does it. Mind control is about controlling the reptilian brain, and the rest of the brain follows it. Why? Because it's the primal brain. It's the brain stem. It's what leads right up from the spinal column. This is why politicians, corporations, advertisers, and religions all target the reptilian brain. Things like learning, exploration, art, music, innovations, inventions, etc. are not features of the reptilian brain because they are not directly related to survival. So you wonder why they keep you check to check and why you have to work nine to five so that your all your time is consumed with them and in the reptilian portion of the brain based on survival. You know, as Western um, society has become more and more fleshly in nature and people operating from the base instinct much more than in the past, they have lost a lot of interest in those things that aren't related to survival. This would explain why test scores in the Western countries are down, why people don't read as much as they used to, why they don't pursue hobbies and other interests, why they don't um, have no interest in nature, etc., When I see an individual throw things on the ground outside when there's a trash can or something in the walking distance, I'm appalled personally because that means that they don't have respect for the planet which that they live on and the earth is a living entity. And that shows me that they are still in interpersonal consciousness. And they haven't raised to life consciousness. Their awareness is being possessed by that reptilian portion of the brain. Another feature that the elites and Wall Street particularly want to enhance in people is the greed. Aspects of the reptilian brain because it keeps people buying things, being consumers. And remember, so-called blacks are the largest consumers. Even though we make in essence... Um, GP, gross product, over $800 billion. Yet we only account for being 35 million people. But yet our money is larger than Canada and Australia combined. So they want greed. You know, greed in people is a major symptom of people feeling inadequate about themselves. And and they feel that constantly buying products will make them happier and help them to fit into, you know, into their particular group. This message is constantly reinforced in many advertisements and on TV and in magazines. The greed and the power aspect of the reptilian brain has a lot to do with the hierarchy and the sexual aspects of the reptilian brain as well. The effects of this greed is a deterioration of society. The family
family and the environment, and it is detriment- it has detrimental effects on the mind as well because it makes people put consumer products and their appearance ahead of everything else. The effects of this also brings people into a lower state of consciousness, and it keeps them at a lower level, hierarchy of needs. In other words, it keeps us in a state of survival, fight or flight. Now, when we look at this, let's 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 look at what a psychopath is, because actually a psychopath and a sociopath are the same thing. The original name for this um, disorder was psychopath, but the general public and media confused it with psycho and psychotic. So in the 1930s, the name was changed to psychopath, or sociopath, excuse me. But the word psychopath shouldn't be used anyway in this condition because the word psych actually means soul, which is the mind, the mental. And path or pathy, which come from pathos, means suffering or feeling. I think, in a sense, from what we just read, um, a psychopath definitely was not the proper terminology, but it is something in which that was used. But a psychopath, um, word psych means so, the word pathos or pathy means suffering or feelings. So, uh sociopath or a person who has these tendencies has neither a soul nor do they feel. So the word psychopath or psychopathy or, you know, actually doesn't apply. Recently, the media again caused a um, misperception that sociopaths were always serial killers. So now many call the condition antisocial personality disorder or ASPD. Or this name changing with the same nonsense. Now of course, you know, although um majority or nearly all of the um serial killers are sociopaths or psychopaths, as they would say there are four many sociopaths or psychopaths leading ordinary lives. Chances are you know a sociopath or psychopath. I say ordinary lives, but what they do is far from ordinary. Sociopaths or psychopaths are people without a conscience. They don't have normal empathy the rest of us take for granted. They don't have affection. No, they don't feel affection. They don't care about others. But most of them are good observers, and they have learned how to mimic feelings of affection and empathy remarkably well. This is what, this is why you have the great actors, why they win the Oscars or the Osar, which is the image of Puta or Ta. That's what the Oscar is at the Emmys, as in Emmya. why they win for their great acting skills when many of them are sociopaths or psychopaths. Most people with a conscious find it very difficult to even imagine what it would be like to be without one. Combine this with the sociopath effort to blend in and the result is that most sociopaths go undetected. Because they go undetected, they wreck they wreck havoc on their family, on um, people they work with, and on anyone who tries to be their friend. A sociopath deceives, takes 
what he or she wants and hurt people without any remorse. Sociopaths don't feel guilt. Don't feel guilty about it. They don't feel sorry about what they have done. They go through life um, taking what they want and giving nothing back. They manipulate and deceive and convincingly lie without the slightest second thought. They live a path of confusion and upset in their wake. Who are these people? Why are they the way they are? Some say it has nothing to do with their upbringing. Many studies have actually been done in which that um, found out that um, it doesn't matter what kind of childhood in which that individual has, um, they can actually have a good childhood. What they uh, found out is that it can, it can actually be a, um, any kind of family. It can be, um, they, they claim that it's partly genetic and partly mystery. There is no mystery. I can tell you, it's the lack of melatonin that is being produced within the brain. Due to the calcification of the pineal gland, the precursors to melanin, in which that all the chemicals or hormones in which that is excreted from the pineal gland, is melatonin and serotonin. Melatonin is produced between the hours of 11 p.m. tonight, um, at night to 7 a.m. in the morning, and serotonin is produced from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. tonight, um, at night. So it is because of the lack of melatonin, serotonin, in which that is being produced from the pineal gland based on the fact of the calcification in which that relegates the usage of the brain to the reptilian portion or the primary brain or the brain stem. Hence, one's instincts. You have to understand this. Researchers have found that the brains of sociopath function differently than normal brains, and that their brain function in a way that makes the emotional life unredeemably shallow. And yet they are capable of mimicking emotions like professional actors. Sociopaths don't have normal affection with other people. They don't feel attached to Others, so they can't see the oneness, and you have to watch a lot of these individuals out here who is propagating these various forms of groups per se, in which that aren't dealing with spiritual enlightenment. That aren't dealing with the awakening of particular aspects of the brain areas, such as the pineal gland and the decalcification of the pineal gland, that aren't talking about the science of melatonin and serotonin and how to boost these hormones from these ductless glands or endocrine glands. They don't feel attached to others. They don't feel love. And this is why they don't have a conscience. If you harm someone, even someone you didn't know, you would feel guilty and remorse. Why? Because you have a natural affinity for other human beings. You know how it feels to suffer, to fear, to feel anguish. You naturally care about others. If you hurt someone you love, the guilt and the remorse would even... Worse, actually would be worse because of your affection for him or her. Take that attachment and affection away, and you can take away the remorse and the guilt and any kind of normal feelings or fairness, and that's a sociopath or psychopath. And you ain't got to believe me. You can get the book, um, The Social Path Next Door, um, um, by um, Robert Hare, excuse me, no, by um, Martha Stowe, S-T-O-U-T, the 
psychopath next door, and you can get without consciousness or without conscious the disturbing world of the psychopaths among us by Robert Hare, H-A-R-E, Robert Hare. You can get those two books. So these individuals are devils. These are the devils that we are talking about. When we're talking about a devil, this are those who exhibit devilish ways. Skunks of the drafted type. Bloodsuckers of the poor. They said 10%. This is what we're really talking about. These are some of the traits that you need to look for when dealing with a psychopath or potential psychopath who you might think might show traits. Do you oftentimes feel used by the person? How often, um, how you often feel that he or she doesn't care about you? Does he lie or deceive you? Does he tend to make contradictory statements? Does he or she tend to um, take from you and not give back much? Does he often appeal to pity? Does he um, seem to take um, or try to make you feel sorry for him? Does he try to make you feel guilty? Does he sometimes feel uh, he or she is taking advantage of your good? Do you sometimes feel that he or she is taking advantage of your good nature? Um, does he or she seem easily bored? Any constant simulation, stimulation? Does he or she use a lot of flattery? Does he or she um, interact with you in a way that makes you feel flattered, even if he say, even he he or she say nothing over um, overtly complimentary? Does he or she make you feel worried? Does he or she do it obviously and more cleverly or sneakily? Does he or she give you the impression you owe him or her? Does he chronically fail to take responsibility for harming others? Does he or she blame everyone and everything but him or herself? And does he um, do these things far more than other people in your life? If you answer yes to many of these um, questions, then you are more than likely dealing with a sociopath or psychopath. All right? And see, these are the questions. And see, this, this is this reason why we're going into this, because this is the... Um, the psychology of these individuals who get hired into these leadership positions, such as being officers or said officers, overseers, whether it's at the municipality level or county level or state level or federal level or international level, we're dealing with a psychosis in which that Um, If you get the book written by um, Bobby E. Wright, it's called The Psychopathic Racial Personality. Now, you don't know who Bobby Wright is. Bobby Wright coined the term menticide, which he defines um, the deliberate and systematic destruction of a group's mind with the ultimate objective being the extermination of the group. All right, he goes on to say that um, menticide is a worldwide phenomena being implemented against the entire black race. Before he say that blacks in Africa would begin to manifest the behavior of blacks in the United States, and you can see that. He 
goes on to say, watch the leadership, especially those proclaiming their God-given answers to the problems of black people. Bobby Wright, um, Dr. Bobby Wright was a um, psychologist, a brilliant psychologist, a revolutionary thinker, an author. And I suggest you get his book, The Psychopathic Racial Pro Personalities. And he says another um, thing in the book in which that, um, several things actually, but this one is um, in a bullfight after being brutalized while making the numerous charges at the movement of a cape, there comes a time when the bull finally turns and faces his adversary with the only movement being his um, being his um, even bloody size. It is believed that for the first time he really sees the matador. This final conf- um, confrontation is known as the moment of truth. For the bull, this moment comes too late. According to Dr. Wright, the experience of black people all over the world represents an analogous, uh, um, an analog, excuse me, um, situation. And for hundreds of years, our European or white matadors have been holding up the cape of dem- democracy, capitalism, Marxism, religion, and education. And for hundreds of years, we have been charging at the movement of this of these capes, like the bull. We too are suffering from near fatal wounds, and indeed have arrived at the moment of truth. He goes on to say that he defines a psychopath as an individual who is constantly in conflict with other pe- persons and groups. He is unable to experience guilt. He is completely selfish and callous, and he has a total disregard for the rights of others. Dr. Bobby E. Wright goes on to say, wherever one finds whites and blacks in close proximity to each other, whites are in control, whether it's in Chicago or Zimbabwe. And our leaders rarely question this extraordinary universal phenomena, which Bobby E. Wright goes on to say defies every known statistical law of possibilities. He also analyzes some of our so-called intellectual leaders and comments that Black intellectual enlightenment does not always lead to genuine insight, and it can be very damaging to the intellect as reflected by the behavior and attitudes of many eminent black scientists. As a result of the confusion, Dr. Wright concludes that blacks have become disorientated, and the result is the various inadequate and dangerous behavioral patterns. Some has become Canatonic and does not move at all, but wait for divine interventions. Other place their faith and energies in charismatic, um, um, charismatic guides who are just as lost as they are. Doctor Wright tells us that the answer to the black problems can be found in the works and the lives of people like um, Shaka, um, Martin Delaney, Marcus Garvey, H. Rap Brown. Uh, Malcolm X, Chancellor Williams, and others, for they are looked at as the matador. They have looked at the matador or psychopaths for what he was and is and moved against him. Okay? So, Dr. Wright also speaks about the fact that there's only three things that you can do with a psychopath. You can lobotomize them. That means brain reconstruction. Or you can lock them up for life. In other words, imprison them and put them in jail. Or murder them, kill them. And it seems at this time, uh, when he was staying his back, was in the 80s, um, that seemed to have been the solutions. It was that he was referring to. Now, we have some 
Uh, the solutions nowadays, of course, um, increase the melatonin and serotonin production within the brain, in which they help them feel um, more close and com- and more um, cozy with society and with people. Because, I mean, like I said, they, to, to um, most um, sociologists or uh, social behaviorists, um, there, according to our books, there is no known cure or therapy for a psychopath or a sociopath. However, um, based on me also being um, a healer and a herbalist, Now, we have found that increasing the um, the melatonin and the serotonin helps. But this is what what they're lacking in, why they don't have a, um, what appears to have a soul, because they don't have production of these particular hormones. Now, um, also, um, oxytocin, um, um, oxytocin, um, according to um, Paul Zach, one of the um, primary researchers in the field, found that when um, you're given, when you give someone a dose of um, oxytocin, they tend to become more generous. Interestingly, um, they did work on about 2% of the participant. And that these um, students um, fit the personality profile of psychopaths or sociopaths. However, um, for those in which there has a the ability to be redeemed, if if there is such a thing, um, but Elijah Muhammad said that there is no reform in the devil, and these are the individuals that he's referring to. However, for those who um, that it can help, you know, then let it help. You know, so oxytocin is a natural produced hormone that creates uh, feelings of closeness, comfort, relaxation, empathy for others, and trust. Um, you know, so some people need that. So even though, you know, uh, the president was, President Obama was talking about the reptilian portion of the brain, and we need to check ourselves. Um, some people can't check themselves because they don't have the hormones in which that it needs to be produced, in which that gives them that ability to even question themselves. All right? I mean, it's just that simple. I mean, when you um dealing with a sociopath, you know, they make you feel sorry for them. They make you uh, feel worried or afraid. Um, they give you the impression that you owe them or that the world owes them. They make you feel used. Um, sometimes you suspect that they don't care about you. They lie to you and deceive you, like we said earlier. They take a lot um, from you and give every little back. They make you feel guilty or used to manipulate you. They take advantage of your kindness. Uh, they are um, easily bored and need constant stimulation. They don't take responsibility but place blame everywhere. And this is one of the things in which that showed, even in the scriptures, when um, Adam was given Eve, that whole story of morality was the fact is what got Adam and Eve kicked out the garden is because they was placing blame, in which that is a tendency, you know, which is... Um, which is part of the reptilian portion of the brain. Adam was not taking responsibility. In other words, you know the story. It says um, um, God gave um, Adam Eve, and um, he supposedly made him eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when God came down into the midst of the garden and asked where Adam and Eve was, and he seen him with the fig leaf, uh, you know, you know, he asked, well, who told you this, you know? And, of course, he, they blamed it on the serpent. And then, uh, you know, Adam um, say, well, God, you basically you gave it to me. And he blames it on Eve. 
So this reptilian portion, the reason why the reptile was there because it symbolized the reptilian portion of the brain and how man uses that to get out of responsibility, out of accountability. So we have to take responsibility for the things in which that is actually going on. However, you also must know that um, you must also know the things in which that are going on and taking place at the same time. All right. So, um, all right, no doubt. It's time for us to become the gods and goddesses that we need to be in order to overcome this mentality. All right. So, um, Bobby E. Ray goes further on with the um, white path of, um, psychopathology, um, in which that he states, in which that um, Dawn said that the basic premise of his work is, is that um, in their relationship with the black race, European whites are psychopaths. And this is what we are seeing through the police brutality and racial profiling, is that same psychopathic tendencies in relations to um, how it applies to that interaction between um, the said races. Moby he states that um, the behavior reflecting um, an underlying biological transmitting proclivity with the roots deep in their evolutionary history. All right. He def- um, of course we know what he defines that is. Um, um, he goes on to say that the fact that whites have historically oppressed, exploited, and killed black people all in the name of their God Jesus and with the sanction of their churches, you know, this shows um, the disconnection in the reptilian portion of the brain usage because um, if they love this God so much, Jesus, in which they're supposed to come, who died for the sins of them, who who left the world and so he gave God gave his only begotten son that whoever shall accept him shall not pass but have everlasting life. You know, um all of these, if they believed all of these things but then at the same time historically oppress and exploit and kill black people, they show a um a pathological um nature, a psychological nature. All right. And this isn't, and I'm not being generalized. I'm not, I'm not trying to generalize things here, but I'm trying to um, show where this interaction comes at, because we know that there's racial profiling, we know that there's um, police brutality, and it's not just on blacks. However, um, blacks have the largest prison rate. Matter of fact, there's more black men in prison today then were in slavery in the 1850s. So let's keep this in mind, you know, of what we're talking about. And so um, Bobby Ray speaks about um, the police, the sheriffs, um, other um, authorities, judges, and how they exhibit these same traits as being psychopaths. And you can go back and analyze what we've been talking about now for the last nearly hour and a half. You know, how you can look for the profile of a psychopath. You know, superficial charm, manipulative, and cunning. They never recognize the rights of others. I remember, let me explain something to you. And I know this for a fact because I wrote on my own plates for more than six years off and on, mostly on, in which that we were always harassed by white men, by the white male, Albion males. Never were we ever stopped by a said black cop or black female cop on our tags. And what I mean on our own tags, I mean that we wrote on our washer tour plates over six years there was always a white male said white male Albion who wanted to 
show forth his superiority, his said superiority, but by showing it, it was actually show forth his inferiority complex in which that he actually had. So they don't recognize the rights of others and see their self-serving behavior as permissible. They appear to be charming, yet so um, covertly hostile and domineering, seeing their victims as mere um, merely as an instrument to be used. They may dominate and humiliate their victims. And this is what we are seeing with this. This is what I'm saying is that they are looking for, when, when these individuals join the police force, they are looking for that. Let's go back to the KKK. Remember, the KKK was a religious organization, but they also felt as if they had to dominate the people of color or the melanated people. This goes to the grandiose sense of self, feeling entitled to certain things as their rights, but not respecting nobody else's. Also to the pathological lying, has no problem lying coolly, easily, and it's almost impossible for them to be truthful on a consistent basis can create or get caught up in a complex belief about their own power and inability. Extremely convincing and even able to pass lie detecting tests. This is how good a psychopath is, sociopath is. And I'm telling you that these are the individuals that we are oftentimes dealing with um, in the law enforcement. This is why they have to begin to start giving new tests in which that shows these traits in order for um, we can begin to have a society in which that um, is dealt more with um, mercy, love, and right. But as long as these reptilians are running the society, they don't. They do not want mercy, love, and right. They want chaos because their philosophy is for out of chaos comes order. They also a lack of remorse, as we said, shame and guilt, a deep-seated rage, which is split off and repressed, is at their core. Does not see around, um, around um, others around them as people, but only as targets and opportunities. This is racial profiling. This is where the racial profiling comes in at because of their mentality. They don't see others around them as people, but only as targets and opportunities. They're per- they. They purposely train officers, police officers or policemen. Let me say it that way because they're not officers because they're not part of any office or court. And even if it was a de facto court, um, can't record it that. But these individuals only see people as targets and opportunities. So when we talk about racial profiling, that is, this is what we're talking about. Instead of friends, they have victims and a, an accomplice who ends up as victims. The end always justifies the mean, and they let nothing stand in their way because the whole thing is about winning by any means necessary. That's what it is about. They want to win. Take away love, relationship, and all that you have left is winning the game, whatever the game is. If they are in business, it becomes rich, defeating competitors. If a civil rivalry is about um, defeating the the siblings, your brothers and sisters. If it's a contest, the goal is to dominate. If a psychopath is the um, envious sort, winning can be simply making the other lose or fail or be frustrated or embarrassed. A psychopath goal is to win. That's their goal. And he or she is willing to do anything at all to win. Psychopaths don't have um, much to think um, about as normal people, so they can um, be very clever and cunning or conniving. Sociopaths aren't busy being concerned um, with relationships or moral dilemmas or conflict and feelings because they're not working in the neo cortex of the brain or the frontal lobes of the brain or exhibiting right hemisphere thinking. 
it really get into the left hemisphere of their brain, calcified pineal gland, um, um, hence low melatonin, serotonin levels, hence relegated to the reptilian portion of the brain, the brain stem. This is where they act. So their time is consumed with um, thinking of clever ways um, to gain trust and then stab you in the back. i give you a good example of this. I had an officer, um, we was um, driving, or I should say navigating, I should say, because um, we don't have license, we didn't have license, and we had our own place on our own automobile, and we was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we was going to assemble um, and teach class one Sunday. And the officer was riding behind us, and he stops, and he gets out the car, and he still has his lights on, and he said he was curious about the plate. And so he goes back to the car and says, okay, well, let me cut off the um, the lights and everything. And then he said, you know, well, I'm curious about the plate. You know, can you tell me some information about it? And I started telling him all the information that he needs to know, showing him my U.N. badge, um, my um, affidavits, the right to travel, showing him the seals, um, stand by the um, clerk of court who is actually an officer of the court, unlike himself. He isn't or wasn't. Um, and he asked, you know, well, can they come back for class and so forth and so on. You know, of course, you know, we was like, well, yeah, you know, if you want to, you know, um, you know, we're going to teach on the science of law and different other things, aspects. And so he comes back about 10 minutes later with his crew. So, see, his crew now arrests myself and my wife. Now, we weren't even in the car. We was out the car, all right? So we weren't even um, driving, as he would say. But they took us downtown, but within a matter of um, less than four hours, we was, we was out because the people who was with us bailed us out. But... You know, you know, big, you know, big shout outs to those on which that, you know, still what they're doing that time period. But the thing is, is that these renegade or rogue cops, police, they pulled out shotguns, sort of shotguns, on a crowd in which that was mostly children. And we have them right now in the United States Supreme Court suing them for those violations, seeking remedy, redress for their denial of rights on the color of law. Color of law. I mean, they they were using color of law, in which that um, appears to be law on the surface, but actually isn't. It's legal, but it's not lawful. But this is who you're dealing with. They're conniving. Very conniving. They have, you know, shallow emotions. When they show what seems to be warmth, joy, love, compassion, it is more uh, fringe than experienced and serve as an um, alternative motive. Outraged by um, insignificant matters, yet remained in unmoved and cold by what would um, upset a normal person since they are not genuine, neither are their promises. The incapacity for love, the need for stimulation, living on the edge, verbal outbursts and physical um, punishment are norm. Promiscuity, gambling are common, callousness, Lack of empathy, unable to empathize with the pain of the, of their victims, having only contempt for others' feelings of detress, detest, excuse me, and uh, readily taking advantage of them. And this is seen in those cases in which that we spoke about earlier, as far as um, those particular cases of. Police brutality, 
like uh, with um, Abner Lu- um, Luima. The cops say he wanted to do those things to Luima, stick the um, the plunger up his um, anus, then um, break it off and put it in his mouth. Callous, lack of empathy, having no contempt for others' feelings, poor behavior control, impulsive nature, rage and abuse. We see that in all of those cases that we talk about. How they um, um, people are just um putting their hands up or reaching um, you know, for their wallet or cell phone or whatever the case is. Rage and abuse, alternating with small expressions of love and approval, producing a addictive cycle for abusers and abuse, as well as creating hopelessness in the victim. Believe they are all powerful, all knowing, entitled to every wish, no sense of personal boundaries, no concern for their impact on others. This is a psychopath. Early behavioral problems, juvenile delinquent, possibly. Irresponsibility. Unreliability, not concerned with wrecking others' lives and dreams, you know. There was no concern for the Wima. Obviously, you know, and, you know, um, you know, doesn't accept blame themselves, but blame others. You know, um, promiscuous um, sexual behavior, they deviant. Um Child abuse, molestation, rape, sexual acts of all sorts. That's what we just finished talking about with this police who did that to Abner Luima. Going to stick a plunger up his anus, up his rectum, and then take it out and then stick it in in his mouth, breaking his teeth off in the front. Where, where, where you learn that at in on law enforcement? Lack of realistic... Um, life plans, parasitic lifestyle, tend to move around a lot or make all encompassing promises for the future, poor work after it, but exploits others effectively. Criminal or um, entrepreneurial um, facility Change their images is needed to avoid prosecution. Change life story readily. The same officers in which that put out these shotguns on us when we got them on the stand and we embarrassed them because um, we asked them, well, when was the last time you read the Constitution, which you took your oath to, and they were saying the eighth grade. Um, so we was like, so the last time, you, how old are you now? You're 32. The last time you read it was the eighth grade. How old was you? So you haven't read the Constitution in over 20 years, but yet you took your oath to it? So how can you enforce something that you don't know? And so we embarrassed them. So they never came back to court, and so eventually those those charges in which that was fictitious um, plates, fictitious uh, identification, no license, no registrations, no insurance, all those things, everything was dropped. Dismissed, disposed of. This is the mentality. Change, change life stories readily. They'll change it at a whim. Doesn't matter. They'll lie about it. don't perceive that anything is wrong with them. Mm-hmm. They, they have an emotional need to justify their crime and therefore need their victims' affirmations, respect, and gratitude, and love. Need to um, definitely check the individuals that you roll with. 
Because these could be, they could be black devils. Dr. York spoke about that. And that's what you could be dealing with. Because psychopaths don't discriminate who it is they lie to or cheat. There's no distinction between friend, family, or sucker. No one wants to be a sucker. So how do you prevent yourself from becoming close friends and getting into a relationship with a psychopath? It's really almost impossible in some extent. But you can tell from those particular questions that I gave earlier. Our tendency is to forgive, you know, when we um, catch a loved one in a lie. Psychopaths play on this fact. Psychopaths will lie over and over again. And where other people who might be sincerely, who might sincerely apologize, a psychopath may apologize but won't stop. Right. Well, this is the information that we're dealing with. We're gonna go to the lines. We have a question at four one zero four one zero. You're on the you're on the air. Peace. Greetings. Four one zero. And then in five seven one one. And then in five seven one one. You're on the line. Oh, um, Brother Bay, hi, this is Sister Paulette. How you doing? Greetings, greetings. Oh, I was just um, listening. Um, I guess the only comment I have to say is that, um, as you know, I work with a lot of young people, at-risk youth, and a lot of times that psychopath um, behavior, especially when they are encountered with um, the policemen, um, they're always flexing their uh, power over them. A lot of times they get um, um, black eyes or they get um, one um, student had like his tooth. Um, The officer hit him in the mouth and um, his tooth came out, Um, always like throwing him down on the ground. And, you know, just um, the behavior that, you know, those psychopaths usually use, they display it on the children all the time. And we have student that actually his parents had sense enough to sue the the police finally. Somebody took it upon themselves to go ahead and sue the police. So, you know, that was just a comment that I had to say. And I am enjoying the show tonight. So um you you all have a good evening, okay? All right, thank you. All right. All right. So um we oftentimes see a lot of that. Oftentimes see a lot of that. Um, we're going back to the phone lines. We got 202, 202, area code, you're on the air. Do you see answers in your phone call tonight? Peace, peace, 202, you're on the air. That's not you. Yes, 202, Hello? ending in 8. Four four zero ending in eight four four zero. You on the air? We just listening more. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, let's finish this on up. All right, what we're going to find out is that based on the police brutality and based on um, the rise, and like we said, um, it is said now that the um, said black male is more in prison now than it was in slavery back in 1850. Um, There's more than, um, there's over a million brothers in prison, nearly two million, and 
there's nearly a million of our sisters. So prison is big business. And this is what we went over last week, discussion. So I'm giving you, attempting to give you some understanding of some of the things, you know, of that malignant uh, personality, you know, these people are mentally ill and extremely dangerous. You know, I mean, they're egotistical, you know, to the point of Gnosticism. They believe, you know, that they're set apart from the rest of humanity by some special grace. You know, they're scapegoats. You know, they are um, incapable of either having the insight or willingness to accept responsibility for anything they do. Whatever the problem is, it is always someone else's fault. You know, genuine religious morals and other um, values play no part in their lives. They have no empathy for others and are capable of violence. Under um, older uh, psychological terminology, you know, they fall into the category of psychopaths or or sociopaths. But unlike the typical sociopath or or psychopath, um, their behavior is masked by um, superficial social facade. Because, once again, they are great mimickers. They, they, They know how to mimic Right, and the mimicking portion comes from the activation of the limbic brain, which sits right up from the reptilian brain, in which that is part actually of the um, um, the medulla oblongata um, area, in which that deals with the copying area. All right, how to copy. So um, that is where that comes from. You know. No. I mean, so much information is ridiculous. Um, so we'll write um, books on this information and put all this information which that we're that we're talking about on the radio um, into a composite of a book, um, so that y'all can definitely reap the benefits from it. Um, right now, my book that is out is the First World Order, in which that I recommend. Um, you know, the people to get, um, you can go to www.cultural-freedom.com. That's cultural, that's C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L, cultural-freedom.com. That's our website. And, you know, you can go on there and study information. You can also go to www.free, F-R-E-E, webs, W-E-B-S, dot com, right, slash, Raka, R-A-K-A, right slash. So that's www.freewebs.com, right slash, Raka, R-A-K-A, right slash, which is another one of our websites in which that deals with the healing aspects, um, in which that we teach classes on healing every um, Sunday and Tuesday at 730 in which that um they're, they're online classes in which that the healing which that we deal with is herbology, herbalism. We deal with um acupressure, irisology, reflexology, um, astrology, numerology, Reiki, pranic healing, qigong, tai chi. And etc. All right. Um, also on Mondays and Thursdays, uh, we have Washington Law classes. I'm a Washington Moor, and the word Washington comes from the word Ushita, which is an ancient Egyptian word in which that means, uh, which is basically that sun disk in which that you would see with the wings. In which that Malachi the fourth chapter second verse speaks about that the son of righteousness comes with healing in his wings. That is the symbol of the Ueshet or Washashet. And the Washashet is the word Washita. And that's where it originates from, is derived from. And it rest basically means the epitome of enlightenment. In other words, one who had reached the higher self or the most high God within oneself. So that's what the Washita symbolizes. And so just being a more and not making that distinction of um, a person in their lower self or higher self, um, you know, is for not. 
you know, we want more to be in their higher selves. Um, so um, this is a distinction. And, of course, you can join us here every Wednesday at 8 o'clock on the Dr. Ali Mel Bay show in which that we can go over various subjects. Uh, I mean, information from police brutality as we do on the night to prison and um, population to um, natural disasters to indigenous rights to metaphysics, decoding religion to UFOs. Whatever the case is, we're dealing with it. We're dealing with it because this is the things in which that takes place on planet Earth, and most of it is idiotic. But we must speak about it and come up with solutions. So this is what we're going to do is build on the solutions. We spoke about the fact of how there's no um, particular remedy or cure for a psychopath, I mean a real psychopath. You have those who also exhibit the traits, but there might be something for them, which is the oxytocin, in which that um, helps with the melatonin and the serotonin production rate, in which that helps the individual begin to feel closer to um, people. Um, however, for a total sociopath or psychopath, there is no cure, and it goes back to, uh, you know, what Bobby E. Wright, Dr. Bobby E. Wright spoke about in his own, in his book. All right? So, um, for the police brutality, you can see those traits. Now, for the police brutality... Um, the remedies would be, of course, um, lawsuits in which that you would want to make sure that the lawsuit is recorded. You can do it within the superior court. And, of course, if you don't get any remedy there, you can always appeal it to the um, appellate court and take it into the federal level. All right. The violations must be um, at the federal level, um, denial of rights on the color of law, and um, and them um, denial of not just your civil rights but also your human rights. So you can also use human rights violations also. And of course, if you are more, then you can use Indigenous Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. as well as also United States Supreme Court case laws in which that speaks about the fact is that officers are not exempt from prosecution or from lawsuits for violations that are going outside the bounds of the Constitution. This is United States Supreme Court case laws in which that um, all correlate that if um, you have statutes, codes, rules, regulations, policies, or ordinances in which that do not uphold um, its relevance to the Constitution, those particular legal said colorful laws are actually null and void. It's as if it never existed. And we as um, we the people do not have to um, pay attention to those types of laws. And this is the realness of what is that we have to reinvoke here is, is the Constitution based on the fact that that, that is the that is what they have taken their oath to. As de facto as it is, it is still something in which that they have taken their oath to in which that they are bound in order to have to recognize. And that is what you will use in order to um get some redress or remedy from. And of course, um we spoke about the fact of leaning the officers in which that now, um, in some states, they're telling officers in order to take their assets and property out of, the, out of their names and put it in someone else's name. This is what they're doing now because of the ability of the 
um, natural person be, or natural being being able to go and get at those particular officers in order to stop their credit. All right, what you would do is take their bond number, which is their, um, oftentimes their badge number, and you'll put their um, names upon a UCC1 financial statement, and you'll send that to the comptroller or the um, city financial officer in order to show that the officer is a liability. These are the things in which that uh, research has to be go go into and that we must study in order to make sure that we are not being violated. All right, I remember a time when um, it was real close to Christmas, like around now, and it was on. Um, we was in New York, and it also approached my wife, and we was right on the own tax then, and. Um, he was trying to give her a ticket, and she told him straight up, um, it's awfully close to Christmas. I hate to place a lean on you. He hurried up and got away from her and told the other officers to um, get away from her, too. So, I mean, we have to come up with some type of way to protect ourselves, our property and our assets, i.e., ourselves, in order to keep from being in escrow, which is jail. So, um, these are the sciences. Let's see here. I think we got a question. We got a um, question from 202. No, then we're going to go to 773. 773, you're on the line. 773, you're on the line. And then in 3477, you're on the line. 773? All right, we're going to 214. 214, you're on the line. 214, you're on the line. Peace. Peace, peace. 214, and then in 2094, you're on the line. Peace, peace. All right. Seeing that those callers um, are listening, so let's go to the chat room. All right. Right, exactly. Blacks, um, true. Never try any um, true justice. Exactly, exactly. That's that's definitely one of the problems with us as a people is definitely um, pursuing um, these cases um, to the full extent. You know, um, we we have to keep pushing. We have to keep doing what we need to do in order to um, seek some type of remedy. You know, regardless on how high of the court that we have to go to. But um, we're gonna leave y'all with that. First world order radio. Finally, finally. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. 
Turn the radiates electromagnetics of sound to the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. And indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Turn the radiates electromagnetics of sound to the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.